All right. So we are going to build a lo-fi radio station. We're going to use Amazon interactive video service. The first thing we're going to do to create this lo-fi radio experience is create a channel. One way to do that is right in the AWS console. So you could just click create channel and you'll be prompted for a few questions. Another way that I like to do that is, so I like to use the CLI and it's really easy to do that. You basically say IBS create channel. You pass it a name, you pass it a latency mode. In this case, we're gonna do a low latency. Then the type, and there's two types of channels, basic and standard has to do with the, uh, essentially the resolution that's passed through to the end user. If we create the channel, we can go ahead and run that command. We get back this JSON and um, I'm gonna delete this immediately so that nobody uh, can start broadcasting, but really this is all you need to start broadcasting to this live stream channel. You have an ingest endpoint, you have a playback URL, and you also have your stream key. And again, this is a unique key tied to this channel, almost like the password to this channel, so to speak, that your software will require to, uh, to broadcast to this channel. Here's my canvas. Here's my little online offline indicator, and here's my button. Because we're doing this live lo-fi stream with kind of this animated GIF, we do have a video tag that points to an MP4. Another thing I have here is a link to a JavaScript file and a link to our web broadcast SDK. So the first thing we need to do, create an instance of the broadcast client. And we do that by calling the broadcast client.create method. We pass it an object. Within that object, we have a stream config and an ingest endpoint. So the stream config is just what type of channel we're gonna use. We also have that ingest endpoint that was an artifact of creating our stream that we saw earlier. Quick question. When Go you're in, sorry, in the, in the markup part, so the, is the loop what causes it to not stop looping? Because right, this is 24 seven, if we're having the music, is the right. word loop here gonna be the, what causes it to loop? Pretty much, sorry, I know that, it sounds yes. like- No, but, no, no, I, I, should, I, should have, uh, I should have mentioned that. And I also have muted, there's no audio in the video itself. The video is just the graphic. We're going to do the so audio separately. The playlist. Are you putting the playlist? Are you getting a playlist of songs yes. separately? And then, right. In, okay. Right. And you could do that with IVS. So you don't have to do it as one video. Cause that was the other issue I yep. had right. when I tried doing it in a different way where yeah, I had to like upload a video with the music. Yeah. We don't want to do that because that video would be huge. Number one. Yes. And number two, it might not be the same time. Your animation may only be 20 right. seconds and your exactly. track is 15 minutes or 30 <laughs> or an hour. And you just want the video to loop independently and the audio yep. to loop independently. Amazing. So yeah, that's why they're kind of done separately. So the video is on a loop and um, we'll get to the audio in just a second here and show you how that gets added. Step two is to add the pre-recorded video to the client. And we do that by getting an F, uh, a reference to that video that we just looked at in the markup. And then we call add image source on the broadcast client, pass it the DOM element of that video tag and give it a unique name now that we've added the video to the broadcast client, we actually want to add that to the UI. Is that our the, thumbnail? Or uh, it's, no. it's, so this will be so we can actually see from a broadcasting side what is actually being broadcast. We don't technically have to. At this point, we can see it right here, right? Can, <laughs> I, give, is, uh, <laughs> can I give context of this image? Please, sure. So when I went over to Todd, I actually asked somebody on Fiverr to create. <laughs> My fingers look a little weird. <laughs> so you'll see when it moves. <laughs> you won't be able to unsee that, but whatever. Oh, thanks. Yeah, they look like tarantula legs at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so funny. Anywho, you got probably. the high pony and everything. And your hair looks a little longer in that gift than, than it usually is. Oh, yeah, I think I had a, I think I sent them photos of the ponytail extension. TMI. That's, <laughs> that's great. Um, so this is just the preview. Get it back to the code. This is just the preview. We didn't have to do this. Like if we just wanted to add a button, we don't have to actually see what we're broadcasting. It's just to have that feedback from a broadcaster side of things. When that broadcast button is clicked, we want to call a toggle broadcast method. That's down here. And essentially we call video.play. So right now that video is not playing. It's just kind of paused at the first frame. So when we broadcast, it'll actually start the animation. And we do that with broadcast client.start broadcast, passing it our stream key. So let's do step four. And this is kind of the um, 
the part where the interesting stuff happens with the audio. If we started it right now, the only thing we would have is a GIF playing over and over and looping, but there would be no audio track. So I have this create audio stream method. So what we do here is we create a new audio context. We get the MP3, then we grab an array buffer from that file. We call decode audio data to get an audio buffer. And we also want a stream destination. So from that audio context up here, we call create media stream destination. We get a buffer source. We set the buffer source to the audio buffer from our MP3 file. We tell it to start at zero. Then we connect it to that stream destination that we grabbed from here. We tell it to loop again because we ah. want that audio to loop endlessly. So you could make that false. That's like if you yep. didn't. So if this was false, we would have no music at some point. Like it yes, would pause, it would but we would still have the other one would loop. So it yes. really is controlled separately. There's a possible use case here, right? Let's say you wanted to just broadcast for an hour and when the audio was over, end the stream. You could do that. Then we call aud add audio input device and we pass it the stream from that stream destination that we created up here. So that's kind of the magic here. Now we have to actually call that function for step five here. The only thing we have to do here is call wait, create audio stream and that will create the audio stream. So this has to be async. So if I click broadcast right now, everything should start broadcasting on this channel. So let's click that. Our animation has started to, to play here. My <laughs> the tarantula dying. fingers are, are moving. <laughs> You're scrolling up and down on a HTML page. Yes, it looks really. <laughs> your coffee is steaming. So just like your typical. It's pretty cool because people could really create their own TV, like their own channel. We can jump into the AWS console so we can see that our stream is going out. Yes, I no? hear it. Yeah. Hear it. Awesome.